This is exactly what the World Economic Forum has planned for all of us, and things are spiraling out of control. Now, we have a lot to discuss here, but let's talk about something very controversial that Canada is doing right now. Now, it's no secret that Prime Minister Justin Trudeau has or was part of the WEF's group called the Forum of Young Global Leaders. This was started back in 2004, and it was meant to mold people into what they envisioned leaders should be for different countries. And if we go by what Justin Trudeau did to Canadian citizens in recent years, you'd realize that this is what the WEF stands for. Remember the Freedom Convoy of truckers who refused to get jabbed? They had their bank accounts frozen because they didn't want to do what Justin Trudeau was telling them to do. After weeks of protests, Prime Minister Justin Trudeau is taking drastic action to put an end to the Freedom Convoy protests. The time to go home is now. Trudeau invoking emergency powers, allowing the government to remove cars and trucks, suspend their insurance, and even freeze truckers' personal and corporate bank accounts. He says the powers will be limited in scope and that he's not calling in the military. The Emergencies Act will be used to strengthen and support law enforcement agencies at all levels across the country. He also treated citizens in his country who refused the miracle drugs as enemies, even telling them that they can't board trains or planes because they're the problem. Now at this point, you're now well aware of what the WEF stands for, a group of unelected leaders with extreme power and control over different world leaders. Which brings us to a very troubling story that's happening up north. From the day a child is born, most parents' instinct is to protect, but what happens when a child wants to end her life? That's the issue being scrutinized in a Calgary courtroom. A publication ban protects the identities of the father and the daughter. We're referring to the daughter as M and the father as W. Now, M lives with her father and told him back in December that she had been approved for medical assistance in dying. Her date of death was February 1st, but the father was granted an interim injunction the day before her death was set to take place. According to court documents, the father believes she's not competent to make the decision and that she's generally healthy and believes that her physical symptoms, to the extent she has any, resulted from undiagnosed psychological conditions. The diagnoses described in court are autism and ADHD. I think it's really important this case surfaces the need for everybody to understand that people with autism can absolutely have decision-making capacity. Dalhousie University professor Jocelyn Downey emphasizes that the woman did not file any court documents explaining how she came to qualify for MAID. It's really problematic that a lot of people are speculating and they're suggesting this is inappropriate because XYZ with they have no way of knowing what her medical conditions are. Just to clarify, MAID is short for medical assistance in dying. This means that people who want to leave their life behind can apply for this in Canada and can be assisted in doing so. Now, I know it sounds insane, but this is what they're doing there. What you heard was that the father, who we're referring to as W, managed to stop his daughter from taking part in this program. The problem is that a Calgary judge has ruled against him. So a judge is telling this guy's daughter that it's okay to take your own life and that the father should not have a say in all of this. So here's the worst part in what this judge had to say. While he agreed that the father would go through grief because of the loss of his daughter, he also said that there would be irreparable harm done against his daughter if he did not allow it. Now, I'm not really sure how much more harm you can inflict on someone, but taking someone's life has got to be way up there when it comes to harm. But that's what the judge is saying. The judge further added that the father should instead find find solace in the fact that he tried his best to keep his daughter alive. Now, critics of the Trudeau administration, they allege that he's playing right into what the WEF wants. In fact, someone asked if this is the express lane for population reduction, something that even billionaire Bill Gates has talked about, that we need to lower the world's population for climate change. And while the parameters for someone to be approved for MAID, M-A-I-D, is still specific, there's a chance that it can be expanded. But what makes someone eligible for the program? So first, you have to be eligible for health services funded by a province or territory or the federal government. You have to be at least 18 years old and can make your own decisions. This means that you're mentally competent. There's also the part where they ask you if you have a grievous or irremedial medical condition. And of course, you have to volunteer for the program yourself. Now you might be thinking, okay, this sounds kind of reasonable, but there's something that's missing here. The Canadian government actually wants to provide MAID to those who are suffering from mental illness. That topic in and of itself is expected to grow broader as time goes by, which means that more and more people will be found eligible for this assistance. And that's why many are worried about this program, because instead of fighting our own demons, we're instead being told that there's an easy way out. 
that all we have to do is ask and they'll gladly take our lives for us. You also have to consider that mental illness grew these past few years. I believe that young adults were hit more with severe depression and anxiety during the pandemic. And it's hard to blame them because they lost a lot of their prime years. Some even lost their loved ones without even seeing them for the last time. I was working on a big, big mural project and I just felt like it was impossible and I couldn't get through it. And I felt like that was a moment of like, huge crisis moment um, and I really needed help. I, I didn't know what to do. I got through it, but I feel like I haven't really celebrated the end of that project because it, it traumatized me a lot. Whenever I'd like cry or just feel hopeless, I'd think to myself, Mila, you can't be feeling like this. There are other people that are in so much worse positions than you and like for you to feel bad about yourself, you don't have that right. When you're in high school, university, Sejep, um, every period is sort of a transitional period and every period you're sort of looking ahead to the future and where you can get. I know a lot of my friends, they're missing their graduation, their prom, all these moments that we've waited for for so many years and however trivial it may sound it's really really important to us sometimes you just you work through the night you get the project done and you get everything done that you need to get done and then you just can't get out of bed anymore i lost my great uncle uh, over the pandemic he didn't die from covid he died of old age he was 100 years old lived a wonderful life patriarch of the family and because of the government directives uh, I couldn't attend the funeral and I couldn't say goodbye. And, you know, I, I feel lucky that I haven't lost more. Certainly many people have, but those are experiences that you can't get back. Research studies here in our country show that within the first few months of the C-19 pandemic, levels of anxiety and depression showed a six-fold increase. Canada has announced early this year that they're going to hold off on including mental illness as a part of eligibility until the year 2027. It's only three years though. The reason is that they feel as if the country's health system isn't ready yet. Does this mean that they expect a lot of people to sign up once they open this new avenue? Critics of Justin Trudeau feel as if he's not in this for the people of Canada. Many people say that as a young global leader from the WE, he's only advancing the agenda of these globalists, basically a puppet for Klaus Schwab. Now, there's also an extreme theory here from some critics that believe that this program is merely eugenics in disguise, meaning that the unelected leaders from the likes of WEF and the World Health Organization they want to improve the genetic quality of the human population. In order to do this, they have to do it at the expense of people who feel as if they're being helped. But in reality, this is part of their plan to change the entire human population. There's now an argument brewing which asks if the WEF and its members should face charges for what they've done to people across the world. But as we know, we're all stuck in a bubble and the only thing that's keeping us afloat is the truth that we hold. But what do you guys make of this? Is this a future that you can work with? Now, as for me, I'm going to do my best to continue to do the legwork work and bring you guys the information that you deserve to know about. The information that mainstream media tries to keep under wraps. Anyway, before I go, I want to thank you all for hitting the like button. Thank you for sharing this video and subscribing to the channel. I'll see you on the next one.